All right, give us a hand. Whoa, we made it. All right, I want to give you an idea of what we're getting into here. How many brought your Bibles? Everybody brought your Bible. Who doesn't have a Bible? Everybody's got a Bible. Good, because I'm going to teach you some basic manuscript research. Everybody like that? So now I can whip out uh, a manuscript and say, okay, what is this? And you'll be able to tell how it's phrased, how it's used, what it is. So we're going to enjoy this. If not, then I'll be mad. No, I'm just okay. <laughs> we're going to have a good time, okay? So, Father, thank you for the greatness of your word, and thank you for this privilege of helping your people, your children, your dwelling place, understand and know you through the greatness of your word and the example you've given us, our risen and returned Lord Jesus, your anointed. Okay. Now, there's some really interesting things about languages. How many here are bilingual? All right. Now, you'll notice that some things don't translate into another line, into English, right? What, who can give me an example? What does not translate into English? All right, I, I sneeze. Hazu! And you say? All right, health. Now, what does that mean? So if I, so someone sees and I go, health! They're going to go, what? Right? It doesn't translate. All right? So, so if someone sits there and goes, oh, if someone gives me something and I say, what? Gracias, right? Which is grace. I go, grace. That makes no sense. Why would I say grace if someone gave me something? And the answer is? It doesn't make sense. Then why do we say please? And, and Spanish is what? Por favor, which means for your favor. Por su favor, right? So what does that mean? How does that work? Why is there incongruity? Why can't everybody think the same? Because they can't. Their worlds are separate. Everybody's different. So when we come to the Bible, which is 2,000 years ago, an agrarian society, no technology whatsoever, everybody travels at the speed of one and a half miles an hour max, except in a, in a burst on a horse can get up to like 20 miles an hour, 25. But generally, everybody's moving at the speed, the screaming, heart-stopping speed of one and a half miles an hour. Do you expect anything to be the same that we think? Notice before the railroad came into existence where a man went from one and a quarter miles an hour to 25 miles an hour, we went from baseball to football because the baseball reflected that which we had pastoral and then all of a sudden the railroad accelerated us into rapid movement, which is why soccer took off and football. So whatever the speed in which we travel basically makes us what we are. So we have this shortage of time. So we try to say the things in the least amount of time possible. That's why when you say please, the word is not please. You go back in time, we've shortened it. What was it originally? If it pleases you, if it pleases you, the reason you say gracias, right? Gracias. And, 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 and it's by, by the grace of God. You understand? Goodbye, which meant God be with you. Thank you. I thank God for you. We just cut off the rest of the stuff. So through time, we've shortened and shortened and shortened things because we're running out of time. But anyway, so let's now get in the Bible. We're going to go back 2,000 years. We're going to try and see. For, now, God spoke to man for how long? Going back, what, 12,000 years. So man's been working with, God's been working with man. But this and nothing changed until the railroad came out. The railroad changed everything. That's why we're moving further and further away from the Bible, and we're having a hard time grasping certain concepts. So I'm going to try and get us back to that. And one of the things we're going to do is negation, right? That's, that's not a, a country. That's not the nation of Negras, whatever. <laughs> I'll explain it. Here we go. Watch. What part of no don't you understand? How many know what the word no means? No. How many here know what the word no means? If someone says no, how many know what that means? All right. So how many are here? Everybody knows. Everybody knows. <laughs> 
Everybody, how many here understand what no means? Raise your hand. All right, everybody understand what no means? Okay, good, we're in good shape. All right, so let's find out about no. What part of no don't you understand? If you find your child standing on a glass table, what will you tell him? So he starts dancing. No, <laughs> Get down, that was a joke. Anyway, so what do you tell him? You tell him, what, what's that one word you say? No, and you take him off of it, right? Does that make sense? All right, so, all right, let's try it again. If you find your child standing on a glass table and he's getting ready to jump up and down, what will you tell him? No. No, and you'll get his little fanny down and send him down on the ground. No. All right? If you find your child has bitten his older sibling, that means his older brother or sister, what will you tell him? Just keep on biting him. No. <laughs> what would you tell him? No. All right, one person would say no, the rest of you go, that's nice. No. What would you do? Now understand, I'm trying to help you understand the word. I'm trying to help you understand and know God. That, and you can only do it through his word. So I have to make sure I'm very precise so that you understand. So you're going to have to play along with me. Be honest, okay? What would you tell him? Nope. All right. No. Stop. Don't bite your brother, your sister. How many of you have heard of a child that bites? <laughs> right? So what do you do? Say, ah, ah. Oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> no, what do you do? You have to be stern and say what? No, right? Don't bite. Is there any chance that he should bite somebody? No, shouldn't be. So if you find your child standing on a glass table, getting ready to jump up and down, what will you tell him? No. No. All right? If you find your child has bitten his older sibling, what will you tell him? No. no. Right? <laughs> Pretty simple. This is a really hard test, or can't you tell? Okay. <laughs> if you find your child beating his metal toy against the window, what will you tell him? No. Some of you would just sit there and watch him, right? No, let's try it again. If you find your child beating his metal toy against the window, what do you tell him? No, all right, we're, we're together here. Okay, good. If right before dinner your child asks for a cookie, what will you tell him? Oh, no. no. Now, is there going to be a problem here? Yes. Yes. <laughs> all right, I mean, stop and think about that. How often does the child hear no? All the time. All the time, right? He hears it all the time. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. He's like, don't put that in your mouth. Stop it. No. <laughs> right? That's just what, when, when the little, that's why they call it the terrible twos, terrible threes, <laughs> terrible fours, five, six, seven, eight. Anyway. <laughs> so, see, once he starts to run, all hell breaks loose. All right. So, if you, this is, the answer is no in all this. But there's a problem when the child hears it that that's, you can't do that, you can't do that. So if right before dinner your child asks for a cookie and you tell, and what do you tell him? You say no. Now we have a problem. Now we have a problem. This you don't want him doing again. There's no way in heck he's going to do that again. This, there's no way. But is he going to understand that? No, he's not. So telling him no, 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 no. And then can I have a cookie? No. So that means he can never have a cookie. You understand the problem? He can never have a cookie. Now you can understand. What do you mean I can never have another cookie? I can't have a cookie ever? Wait, it's not so. He's not going to go into a, you know, a dispose of a how. You know, he, he, he deprived my whole life of a cookie. That's something what he's going to do. He just, he just going to, in his little mind, he's going to sit there and say, okay, I can never 
have a cookie again. Right? You understand the problem? The brain is going to work that way. All our brains work that way. So right before dinner, you tell us for a cookie. What will you tell him? Oh. No. Yeah. And guess what? Then after dinner, you offer your child a cookie. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I can't play with the, the window with my toy. I can't try and get taller by standing on the table. And now I can't even have a cookie. Ever again. Well, obviously, if you offer a child a cookie, then what you said, you said no. Now you've changed. You're no longer the same. So nothing you said was right. So guess now what the little mini person is going to do? The little rug rat, curtain climber, carpet commander. What's he going to do? He's going to do what he just did. But first of all, he's going to tell you, no, I don't want your stupid cookie. And you know what's worse? Now he's going to get back on the table. Now he's going to grab his toy and play with the window again. Because nothing you said makes any sense. You turned into, in his eyes, a what? A hypocrite. This problem is not just in English. It's in Spanish. It's in German. It's in Latin. It's, in, it's all over. It doesn't exist in the Eastern culture, only in the Western. And I've watched the Japanese, and I've watched the Koreans, and I, I say, okay, they have a whole different way of looking at life. That they don't even say no. I'm going to show you what they say. So you know exactly what to do. But in the meantime, he's going to say no. Because why? You told him no. So now you're going to offer him a cookie. He's going to go, no. And then he's going to get back on the table. He's going to grab his toy, get back at the window. He's going to bite his brother again. And just after you, because nothing you say makes any what? You're a hypocrite. And one thing God is not is a hypocrite. So people complain about God because he doesn't have this inconsistency. And yet we do. So we can't judge God from our perspective, because our perspective is the one that's in there. Does everybody understand this? Does everybody understand the, com the complex situation with the child? So when you're with many people, you've got to be able to think like a mini person. That doesn't mean you stick your thumb in your mouth. I'm just saying you've got to understand from their perspective. Does that make sense? All right. So what's the problem? In our English language, as well as German, as well as Italian, as well as French, we only have either an affirmation. I don't want to say yes, because there's too many yeses in the Bible. And I can't say no, because well, as you're going to see, there's a whole bunch of no's, not just one. So I have to use the, the technical terms. An affirmation is that which you, is truth. It's yes. Affirmative. Yes. Or it's a negation, which in common language would be a what? But there's a problem when you use that word, as I showed you with the child. Does that make sense? Everybody with me? Yeah. Move your head, do something. Okay, make sure you're alive. Okay, good. All right, so an affirmation is a yes. A negation is a what? No. All right, because they're going to be using these two words and not these two words. Got it? To keep things simple. Affirmative. Affirmative. All right. So... Another, a common way of saying an affirmation is a what? Yes. A way, another way of saying yes is a what? Affirmation. Affirmation. And negation is called a what? No. no. And we know when we see the word, when we're thinking the word no, what we want to say is a what? Negation. So how many types of negations are there? Whoa. All right. Now, well, I'm not going to go into Hebrew. Holy mackerel. But I will stay in the Greek. All right. The coin A, not the Greek Greek which is worthless, but the koine, which is a mixture of Aramaic language and the Greek. That's why the word amen is not Greek. It's Aramaic. Concepts are all Aramaic, not Arabic, Aramaic, like Persian, Hebrew. The New Testament, written in koine Greek, 
the mixture of the two languages, Koine Greek, that's because Alexander the Great conquered them and he put his men in charge of each nation. That's why Greek wound up as being the top language. But everybody else still spoke, Ara spoke Aramaic, so the language merged. But the New Testament written in Koine Greek has four what? Whoa, four negations. So when you say no, it, it doesn't work. Because how many are there? There's four. Now, there's, I know the Hebrew has more, but I'm not dealing with the Hebrew right now. I'm only dealing with the Greek. But the Greek really simplifies the Old Testament, so you'll be able to use the New Testament to explain the Old. All right. So what kind, what, how many different kinds of negations are there? All right. First one is All right. First one is conditional. conditional, right? It's not a no. It's a no with a condition, depending on the condition. The other one is a negation. It's just, that's it, no. But this is conditional. The other one is a double negative or an absolute. We got that? It's a double negative or an absolute. And the last one is emphatic negation. That's like, what? Yeah, that's the fourth one. This is the one that's most intense. All right, so we got this. Does this sound like English? Uh, no, <laughs> we don't have this. We've only got two. We only got one negation. But in the Bible, in the, King James, in the, in the New Testament, Koine Greek, there's four. Now, are you going to see it in the English? No, because we only have what? So even though it's in the Greek, it won't be in the English. And I'm going to show you that. It won't be in the Spanish either, because it doesn't make sense. So what did the translators do? They just dropped it. All right. So what's, the, what's an actual negation? What is it? All right. Everybody go, ooh. Ready? One, two, three. Ooh. Right. It's ooh. No, ooh, right, right. It's just a negation. No, are you a frog? Ooh, right. <laughs> I'm joking. Right. The answer is ooh, right. Got it. The other one is the conditional, which is may, which is almost helps us because we always say may I, right? We go may. Yes, you may, right? It's conditional, conditional on something. Could be time, could be environment, it could be maturity. It, there's many different things that it's a negation. Like for the child, that child kind of have a cookie. It was what? Which one was it? When can you have a cookie? What should have been said? May. May. Yes, but not now. The answer was no, not at this time. Then is what well, we're not going to deal with these two. We're going to let those fade off. Because okay, I got to first deal with these two. People go, ah, it's so complicated. No, I'm going to make it really simple for you, okay? So when you grab an interlinear, you can have a blast. By the way, I recommend of all the interlinears that you get one. I would say this is my favorite. It's, I, I kind of used it a little bit. But... Um, that buries in the linear because it carries, it has all the manuscripts in here, it has the King James, all the, this, this, the uh, uh, West Scott and Horace, Sinai Recepticus, it has the uh, Stevens text, it has all top uh, of the seven manuscripts from the 17th century all compiled. So much for my, I use it a lot, as you can see. I even got a couple extras so when one wears out, I can still use it. But anyway, so we got, so what's a conditional? May. What's a negation? Ooh. Like, ooh. 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 Right? Got it? So I'll say it, and you, te you tell me what is conditional or, 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 or negation, right? Right? May. Conditional. Conditional, okay. Ooh. 
All right, got it. We were in good shape. Okay, so let's look at our first one. Let's go and grab. Which one's this one? Right. Which is? And this one? Which ooh? Which is what? Just a straight negation, right? All right, so here we go. John six twenty. But he said unto them, "It is I. Be not afraid." Now the problem is. You and I don't speak naturally, normally, Koine Greek. And if you go to study Greek, you're not going to make any sense out of the Bible because it's a different entirely, it just has Greek letters, few Greek words. The rest are all Aramaic translations. So what I want you to do right now is go into your Bible and read John 6.20, read verses in front of it, verses after it, and get the context and tell me which one it is. What are we dealing with? The not afraid. Read the verses ahead. There's a problem with some of the research books you're going to get. Some are printed in England. Some are printed in the United States. Some are printed in Germany. So you're going to have different pronunciation as, as they see. But generally, like here you said, the long E, it's, it's not. It's me. Me. And that's the standard way of pronouncing that. Me. All right, everybody there? Yeah. Everybody ready for the, for the question? But he said unto them, is it I? It is I. Be not afraid. Which is it? How many say ooh? May. One ooh. How many say may? Two mays. Everybody else is totally clueless. You understand? I told you, you got to use that thing that keeps your ears separated. It's your brain. It must be engaged. So what is it? Ooh. All right, let's find out. Drum roll. All right, here we go. Bang. Do you see it? What happened? Now reread it again and find out why it's May. Why is it May and not ooh? Got the answer? You read it in context. You have to think about why. And you know the answer. The answer is May. Why is it May? Why? You have to look at this and figure it out. Why is it May? Because after this, I'm going to blow your doors off. You're not going to have any socks left when I'm finished. Huh? It's conditional. Yeah, why? By saying, fear not, they've got to stop. How many have ever told someone to stop crying? Stop crying. Okay, oh, stop crying. You can't. Once emotions kick in, you have to change your whole perception of reality to change your emotions. You can't just control. No man control emotions. And fear is a what? You have to have first your perception of reality in order to control your emotions. And, and that's why it's conditional. If they don't got it, they can't do it. How many here have experienced strong emotions and couldn't get out of it? Why not? Someone just, well, stop it. You just can't. Unless you control your reality, your perception. Once you change your perception, you can control it. That's why it's conditional. Ready for the next one? Everybody take a deep breath. Welcome to biblical research. Okay, here we go. John 1.18. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Oh, is that a figure, a compound figure of speech? All right. No. 
Now, what is that? That's in John 1.18. What does it say? No man has seen God at any time. All right, so let's find out. You ready? Let's see how good you did. You know, you realize that you guys are really awesome because the majority of people haven't even gotten as far as you have. All right, here we go. Now, this word, no man, we do a contraction and go none, right? We put the two words, no one, right? And we go none, right? Well, the Greek does the same thing, except it's called des, And ice is one, and u is no and then they put a D there because you can't have that many vowels. You always have to put something in there, like a K or a D. That's just the Greek rule. But anyway, so we find out it is a what? An U. Remember I told you all the words were all continuous, no spaces. And then when they broke them up in the words, they made new words that never existed. So it's U des. So it's not U des. It's not one word. It's U des. No one or no man. This means one. All right, got it? So it was what? Ooh, negation. That's right. All right, ready for the next one? This one's a humdinger. All right, here we go. Luke, <clears throat> 18, 19. All right, everybody there? And Jesus said, now, you've got to read verses ahead of it, verses after it. Ready? Go there and read 1819. And tell me what this word none is. I'm teaching you to be biblical researchers. I'm teaching you how to let the Bible interpret itself teaching you to understand and know God through his word. So what hast thou? Have we got it? So let's find out what the Greek says. See it? Ooh, des. No one or none. There we go. That's why it's a negation. Is everybody having it? Is, see how easy this is? It's not difficult. We're not doing the whole. By the way, the, the Koine Greek is not that many words in vocabulary. It's really, God uses words repeatedly, numerically perfect. The Bible is astounding. But anyway, so it's not like there's a lot to learn because most of the translations have already done the work. Just they don't see the nuances, which I'm teaching you. Notice there's another one there. What's that one? That's the conditional. What the hell is that doing there? Mm -hmm. Why isn't it translated into English? They did not translate this at all. I told you, they don't put things in it don't make sense. So they just drop the word. Like, pfft. But if you put it in there, you got problems. That's a conditional what? Negation. And that is an absolute, right? So we got ude, so that's one, right? None. And then we got me. I'm blessed you caught it. Because I was going to mention it unless someone brought it up. But you did. There's the word good. Agathos. All right? And then this is conditional negation. Conditional negation. And then of God. So we got a problem here. So you you understand Jesus said, and why call some good, okay? Because what is good to us? All right? If I said to you, what's good? How many think that was a good meal? That was a good movie. Really? How much of God did you understand and learn from it? Oh, that was such a good meal. Really? How much did that bring you closer to God? Because there's only one good. Who? God. But that's, in the, in the, it depends on the individual. They, they, by their own free will choice, choose whether to accept God as being the only source for that which is right 
correct, and promotes life. Or they may choose another source, like a movie. Oh, I was so good. And then they reference the movie. Did you see that movie? Boy, life is just like that. They even quote the movies, yes or no. So that movies, are they're good. They're standard of what's right. You ever heard someone quote a movie? Or lines from the movie? That movie is their standard. That movie is qualified as good. That is why this is conditional. God, that's why I said, why call us me good? None good. And then we have the word may. One, God, if conditional that God would be one. Most of the time, he's what? He's not. Most of us don't have one source of reference for truth. We have multiple. Well, that's not what so-and-so said, and that's what was on NBC. And by the way, CBS says, who the hell are they? Is that God it? Most of us have multiple goods. Did you all read before that? He called Jesus good. Jesus goes, oh, I'm not good. Now, what happens when someone says, if I say, are you good? If you say you're good, then you're a standard in which everyone should change their life to agree with. And Jesus said he's not. And Paul says he's not. For the good that I would do, I do not. So he, could, he couldn't be good. So if you're good, you exceed God himself. You exceed Christ. You see the problem? There is none good. There's no standard other than who? God. Well, who did Jesus Christ? Who did he accept? God. Who did Paul accept? God. What else do we have as a standard? Our society, our, our culture, our language. Everything is good. Well, no. Only thing good is who? God. You're to agape God with what? All your heart. That means you have no other good. All your soul. That means there's no other good. All your what? Mind. Unless you have another good. What's at stake? God working with you. God protecting, guarding, and keeping you. The more God becomes a part of your reality, the more you reference him. So yes, it's conditional that God is one. But they didn't translate that. Basically, it's a parenthetical. It's inserted to expand. But we just dropped it entirely. <laughs> dropped it. And put in that is. There's none good. That's the subject matter. None good. But what? No. One. But it's not true for those who... Do you select it not to be true? Like a free Pardon? Like a free well, people don't want one God. They don't want one standard. They don't want one truth. They want a multitude of truths so they can do what they want to do. Because we're dealing with a negation here. Why callest thou me good? Jesus says, I am not the standard. I'm, I'm trying to align myself with the standard. He lives by every word of who? God. How many of us live by every word of God? We never check to see if what we're thinking is of God's word. We don't even consider it. Because we already know. Right? Watch out for that. Then you've got another good. How many rulers do you want? Bro, we have, how many rulers do you want? Five or six that are different sizes? You can see how intense this is. There's may, and it's not in the English whatsoever. Dan, the whole subject matter is negation. Right. Why callest thou me good? There's none good but one. But that's contingent upon what people accept. All right, let's give you an example. All right. 
give me, give me seven inches. Now, all right, she wants something that is good. She does no longer go by her own. Because if she went by her own, she would be having another what? Standard. Something else was good besides the ruler. And every time I do this, people always say, I can do it without the ruler. Well, then what, what are you going by? You're going by something other. Why would you not want to use a ruler? You don't understand. What? Everybody wants more than one good. Why? Because the Greeks and Romans, truth is subjective. Ah, uh, no, it's not. Gravity is gravity. I don't care if you disbelieve in it. Jump off a roof. See what happens. I believe I'll float. <laughs> Happy trails to you. Okay. Doesn't matter of what perspective or how it's viewed or what someone thinks. Truth is always going to prevail. The Greek word is aletheia. But anyway, wait for the next one. You all enjoying this so far? Welcome to biblical research. <laughs> There's so much more to teach you. But anyway, I'm, I, I'm going to blow your doors off here. You ready? Let's see how well you can handle it. This time, I'm going to need you to, need you to put on your seatbelts. We'll be flying at 40,000 feet. Ready? This is, this is really great. Here we go. Now, go to Matthew 19, 18. And read verses ahead of it and verses after it. What am I teaching you? How the Bible interprets what? Itself. It's a very naughty verse. <laughs> what? So much for my jokes. What? All right, everybody? So you've read the context. You're seeing how it works. Okay. Everybody got it? Okay. Matthew 19, 18. He said unto him, which, Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Now, those are all related, by the way, except this one. And this is talking about, Jesus says, an adulterous generation, which means they break the blood covenant. The blood covenant with who? God. So how do they do it? They do murder. They do steal. They bear false witness. So this whole thing is all consistent thought. This is not because it's translated as if it's something totally separate. It's not. It's talking about a blood covenant with God. Because that with all this is all is the commitment, that contract they have with God. All right. So which one is this? No. Not. 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 Well, the question is, let's go one by one, because to tell you the truth, you would assume something. We don't want to assume, right? We don't want to guess. So, thou shalt do no. How many think that's ooh? How many think it's may? May, okay. All right. Thou shalt not commit adultery, which is referring to the blood covenant. Ooh, all right. That's a, yeah, you would think so. <laughs> Thou shalt not steal. Ooh. May. May, okay. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Ooh, may, ooh, may, ooh. All right, how many want to see it? How many think? Let's see if you're right. We're going to do them all at the same time. Ready? On your mark, get set, go. Bing, 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 bing. How many said, ooh, raise your hand. All right, give them an applause for those that they got it right. Isn't that interesting? They were all, ooh. 
Everybody got this? Y'all read the context, right? Everybody read the context? All right, I'm making sure, because this is going to, we're going to find out if you read the context or not. Let's go to Luke 18, 20. You're going to, yeah, you're going to have even more questions after this one. <laughs> stand by, stand by, bear with me. You're going to understand it all at the same time, because here we go in Luke 18, 20. The first one was in what? Matthew. Second one is in what? Luke. Are they saying the same thing? Yeah. Are they saying the same thing? Everybody goes, yes! Yes, yes! But the word, let's find out. Thou knowest the commandments? Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. What happened here? <laughs> do, no, do, do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father. That was weird, but anyway. That's what happens when you move from one computer to another. Not, the word, that should be not here, and that should be that not here. Ah, I hate when that happens. Y'all, y'all can figure that out, right? Yeah. Y'all got that. Okay. Sorry about this. All right. Now, here we go. <clears throat> what the heck with this? All right. All right. Do you see it? May. 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 Conditional. Now, could you ask the, ask the question? Why? And I'm going to ask the same question. Why? Why? 